But as I get older, I find that intimidation plays a major role in my ability to tackle a new project or topic. And so my goal here is to unintimidate you and encourage you to take a look at your own stuff. The small engine world um, is a difficult one because these machines only cost $150 to $300 a piece. And so uh, if a repair bill is 50 or 60% of the price to replace a machine, um, no one wants to do it. And so there's very few small engine repair shops anymore as prices of machines have come down. And so a lot of people are throwing these things away and it's a shame. It's a good way to get acquainted with um, engines and tinkering. And so I have um, chosen to show you not any of my specialty tools, but four simple tools uh, that you probably have lying around to get you started on this particular steel MS56RC string trimmer complaint. So I have an eight millimeter. It could be in any form, doesn't have to be this form, just an eight millimeter. A pair of needle nose. If you're new to this, I would suggest wrapping these sharp edges in some duct tape so that they're not so sharp, uh, so you don't tear the fuel lines. I have a T27, could also be a T25, which fits in the T27. Doesn't have to be a long one like this, can be a shorty. And I have a Phillips, who doesn't have one of those? Okay, so the customer complaint is that it won't start slash hard starts slash only runs on choke. I verified that, and I'm not gonna try and verify that on camera, you just have to take my word for it. I popped the cap, the fuel smelled fine to my own nose, uh, which is sort of not uncommon because customers normally change out the fuel before they come here. You can use the pliers to pull out the fuel filter. The fuel filter is a weighted filter and that's so that when you turn this thing on its side, um, the fuel filter always falls to the bottom and is always getting fresh fuel. You're looking for it to look nice and clear here. If it's really splotchy or super dirty, then that's a problem. You also want to make sure that it's a still attached to the fuel line. A lot of times these fuel lines have deteriorated and this thing comes out and it's no longer attached. So that's the first point of diagnosis done. Second one, T27. Almost everything on a steel machine is T27. Uh, T25 also works. So I'm just going to show you with the T25 because you're more likely to have a T25 than a 27. One little screw. Air filter covers off. Look around for general debris. If this thing is absolutely packed, that's part of your problem. Air filter comes off, same thing. This is looking pretty clean. If this thing is absolutely packed with debris and grass and dirt, that's part of your problem. All right, here comes the eight millimeter. Again, you can use any type of socket you want. I just happen to have this little guy that goes into a drill which it normally would be in right now, an impact, but I'm just showing you the old school way to help you from being intimidated. All right. This is the air filter base. As you try and pull it out, you'll notice it's kind of stuck. That's because on the side here, there is a little hose. That's the fuel tank vent. So we'll take our needle nose pliers. You can even use your fingers and you can get him off easily. Now, there's the port where the hose went. There's the hose. You can't misplace it or anything like that. All right, next you have the throttle linkage here. I'm gonna bend this down. This is probably the trickiest bit, but there is a trick and I'll show it to you. So what you wanna do is you wanna pull the throttle and then when you release the throttle, the spring inside the carburetor is gonna pull that arm up. So instead of letting it pull its arm up, you just put your finger in there like this so now there's a bunch of slack on the cable that hasn't been taken up by this spring mechanism. And now this little thing will very easily pull right out. Now, as you go to pull the carburetor out, there's a little gasket that's reversible. You can't get that wrong unless you tear it when you're trying to pull it out because you're on YouTube. And as you pull this out, there's gonna be two connections. You can see the green one right there. So you wanna work him off. You can use a screwdriver for this. You can also use needle nose pliers for this. You want to be gentle. I had it off a few minutes ago because I want to show you what's wrong with this thing. And then there's a little fuel uh, return line up here at the top. So these are basically lines that you cannot get easily re reversed. 
and now your carburetor's off. Let me show you those hoses in detail. You have a black line here that goes back to the tank. So when you hit your purge bulb, uh, a mixture of air and gasoline goes back and you can easily check that when you push this purge bulb, you see what comes out. So that has to go to the return line. The green line is the feed line and you know that because it's connected to the fuel filter and we wanna filter the fuel coming in, not the fuel going out. Okay, I'm gonna move the machine now. Raise your back up, point you back down. Okay, carburetors. Their purpose is to mix approximately 14.7 parts air with one part fuel in order to get a good burn. These little carburetors almost all look the same. You have the fuel pump side and the metering diaphragm side. Sometimes there's a purge valve, sometimes there's not. These things, basically, you cannot reassemble them wrong unless you're really trying. So I'll show you what I mean by that. One screw, this whole thing comes off. Immediately we find part of the problem. So you can see even from a distance, shiny aluminum, very dirty, corrosion, things like that. You can even see that there is physical debris in here. That debris is gonna plug up the orifices in here and cause all kinds of problems. So we already know it's a fuel problem. Here is the fuel pump diaphragm. The way this guy works is as you pull over the engine and the piston goes up and down, you get pulses of air and we use those pulses of air to make this diaphragm fluctuate back and forth and act like a pump. What you may not know if you've not done most, most many of these, this is extremely brittle. You can hear that. It should not be making such a crinkling noise. And you can also see that this thing has, is, is basically not pliable at all. So this guy is shot. Now you might not know that if you've not handled a lot of these, but now you do. You can also see there's a lot of dirt and residue on here. So that's bad. Now the fuel pump side looks pretty clean. This is a screen, which sometimes is packed with dirt and debris, but in this case, it's very clean. So this looks great. Then on the other side, this would take me about two seconds, but I'm using old school methods instead of a gun so that you're not intimidated if you don't have an impact gun. Four screws. If you don't have a Phillips, you're probably not watching this video. So if you do, you probably have enough tools lying around that you can do this job, at least far enough to get the diagnosis done. All right, the screws come out. Now, here's your primer bulb. He should be soft and supple. If he's cracked, that's bad. This little plate, totally reversible. Can't get it wrong. Doesn't matter how you do it. Don't worry about him. This piece, you'll notice, has these little tiny holes here and here, that give you an indication of how it needs to be oriented. And if you orient it wrong, this hose won't hook up. So you really can't do it wrong, but it also pays to pay a little close attention so you don't have to troubleshoot it so much. It's called the metering diaphragm. These always go with this big disc down towards the carburetor, always. And they always sit on top of the gasket. A lot of people get that wrong, that's okay. Uh, what you're looking for here is that it's not torn, which it's not, and that it's very soft and pliable. If this were making a crinkly, crackling noise, it's stiff and bad, so that would need to be replaced. Now, what I'm going to do on this machine is I'm going to clean this. I have an ultrasonic cleaner for that, but you don't absolutely have to have that. You can also use some carb cleaner. You just want to be careful that you don't shove the little nozzle of the carb cleaner into these little orifices and spray because in the throat of the throttle body right at the bottom there it's very difficult to see sorry right down there you have a little check valve it's just a little tiny wafer of material it's very fragile so if you spray with high pressure carb cleaner through here you could damage something so just do it a little bit from a distance then you can order a carb rebuild kit. This carb is manufactured by Zama. There's mostly two carburetor manufacturers. That's Zama and Walboro. There's the Zama adjustment piece, and there's the Walboro adjustment piece. Almost all the carburetors are going to be one of those two companies. In this case, it's a Zama. Then you want to look for the markings right there, C1M. So if you go and you type in Zama C1M rebuild kit, 
for about 10 bucks, you'll get a kit with this and this and several other things. Or if you go to Amazon and you put in steel FS56RC, you can get a whole new carburetor for about 25 bucks. I like the original manufactured carburetors significantly more than the aftermarket ones. The aftermarket ones do work, in my experience, like eight out of 10 times, maybe nine out of 10 times. But I like for my customers to rebuild with original manufactured parts because they are quite a bit more high quality. Okay, I think that's mostly what I wanted to show you. I hope that you're a little less intimidated than you were. I encourage you to try and fix your own stuff. At the very least, you'll screw it up and you'll throw it away, which is probably what you were gonna do anyway. So you might as well learn a little bit about these things so that next time when your or your son's or your neighbor's machine fails, instead of screwing that one up, you'll know what not to do. You'll be one step ahead and you'll actually get one of these things fixed. So grab a few basic tools, lose your intimidation, get in there and try and fix it. Take care, guys.